Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, corn snakes versus ball pythons and what I think is the better pet. talk about size so both corn snakes and ball pythons are going to be great sizes for pets of course ball pythons are going to be a little bit um, heavier bodied and then the corn snake is going to be a slender probably three or four feet while the ball python may be in a similar range but much more heavy bodied and um, ball pythons females are going to be a bit larger than males but a distinction for sure is that when you're buying a hatchling you're going to have a ball python which is um, a reasonably, you know, fits in the palm of your hand snake as a baby and is eating, you know, probably weanling rats right off the bat. So um, the difference is that the corn snake babies are actually very small. If you can see that. And um, the one thing is that they both are very escape prone. So for baby corn snakes, you want to make sure that you have something that's very secure and they're not going to get out of. So the baby I just showed you and all my other young corn snakes are kept in a rack. I am currently keeping mine in these tubs. Um, it can be smaller for a newborn corn snake, but I think these are a good size for me to have young corn snakes and then also even yearling corn snakes. So it serves the most purpose for my use. But don't worry if you don't have a rack system, corn snakes do great in uh, a lot of kinds of vivariums. Just make sure that it is very secure and they can't escape. And that's the distinction of the ball python. I don't think they do very good in aquarium setups. Quite frankly, ball pythons need to be kept at a higher humidity, hopefully over 50% in order to uh, shed properly and then also do all its other bodily functions properly. And aquariums just can't hold enough humidity for that. With corn snakes, they are very um, hardy snakes, so they don't mind uh, humidities all the way from 30% to 80% as far as they're seen as far north as New Jersey and as far south as the tip of Florida and the Florida Keys. Therefore, they're very forgiving animals when it comes to humidity. And for someone who's just buying a pet, um, you probably don't have a rack system, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. As far as adults go, you can very well keep them in 32 quart racks, which is what most breeders do or like I do I keep them in a 41 quart the bigger size that you would usually keep adult female ball pythons in adult female ball pythons would go into a 41 quart just as well as an adult corn snake and then the 32 quart would be great for a male ball python or adult corn snakes so let me just open this up and we'll see an adult male and see how he stacks up to the size of this enclosure so this tub, uh, most people would say that it's a little overkill as far as the size goes, but um, this is a 41 quart in a rack system. So it's keeping, uh, you know, very efficiently a bunch of uh, adult corn snakes. As you can see, corn snakes don't get very big. This is an adult male and they're very, very placid snakes. You know, but they are gonna do a little bit more moving around than a ball python. So a ball python for the most part will just hang out right in the palm of your hand. The corn snakes will uh, move about your hands and go explore. And both ball pythons and corn snakes get more placid with age. So both ball pythons and corn snakes come in a plethora of colors and patterns. But the, the fact is that ball pythons, the mutations have not been around as long as corn snakes, so the price is a lot lower on corn snakes. So like this snow tessera, you know, you can get what's considered a pretty high-end corn snake for only about $150. Instead of for ball pythons to get on the higher end, you may be spending a couple thousand dollars. And just check out how the snake just hangs out and moves across my hands and stuff like that and this is a yearling animal right here just such placid snakes and of course as in ball pythons and corn snakes and then and most all other snakes uh, the smaller they are the more defensive and more just overall jumpy they're going to be but with some handling and some age they all get a little bit better
As far as heating goes, corn snakes are gonna be kept a lot differently than ball pythons. Ball pythons are going to have a hot spot somewhere between 88 and 90 degrees. And then for the warm spot, you actually, uh, most breeders would prefer it to be about 80 degrees. So you're gonna have to have a room that's heated a little bit higher than room temperature. With corn snakes, they seem to do just perfectly fine with room temperature on the cooler side and then 85 degree hot spot and giving that good thermal gradient. So therefore, a lot of people are keeping ball pythons a little bit too cool if they're having them in a normal room in an aquarium. It is a lot more sensible to uh, get a corn snake just for temperature requirements. And West Africa, where ball pythons are from, they're just not much temperature gradient. They're living in termite mounds that have high humidity and don't change as far as temperature goes pretty much all the time. They're very sedentary in that fact that they're pretty much always in that termite mound and they're, they don't do good to uh, changes in environment as far as temperature and humidity go. Corn snakes on the other hand, I mean, they brewmate at 55 degrees so they can take that cooler heat, you know, shut their body down and then get warmed up in the springtime. They're built to handle a lot of different temperature and humidity situations. When it comes to breeding, both species are very easy to breed as far as ball pythons. You don't even need to drop them, but you're supposed to have a nighttime drop for a certain time of the year in the winter and then breed them as the female grows follicles. And uh, it's pretty straightforward, just keep on introducing the male to the female. With corn snakes, it's a little bit different. You're gonna brew mate for a period of time over the winter, then warm them back up and give them a lot of food and then they're ready to breed. information about breeding corn snakes I do have a breeding corn snakes video and always when you're breeding you got to be prepared for the babies so uh, corn snakes will have higher clutch sizes ball pythons may have 6 to 12 eggs and corn snakes can have anywhere from like 15 to 30 eggs so you're gonna see a lot bigger clutch sizes smaller babies than the ball pythons also uh, both have their struggles with getting started most corn snakes will hit frozen thawed pinkies pretty quickly um, some who are going to be really picky, you might have the tuna scent or lizard scent or even feed some anoles for them at first. But they'll get, once they get going, they eat very, very readily. And as far as the ball pythons go, you may have to feed live first and then switch over to frozen. But uh, they're pretty easy to get eating as well. So in my opinion, as far as health and wellness goes in the snakes, I find corn snakes to be much more hardy than ball pythons. It seems like ball pythons, you know, are very prone to getting things like RI or to not feeding. They also can be very um, temperamental on when they want to eat and also the prey that they want to eat. So you may have a ball python. Most of the males go off feed maybe for a few months in the winter. Females as well, they can go off feed, you know, at any time and they might start wanting African soft fur rats or they might want only live prey and not frozen dog, quite frankly. It's easy for most corn snakes feed readily on frozen thawed rodents. So you just get a bunch of frozen thawed rodents, thaw them out, and they eat pretty much whenever you want them to. Also, note that uh, ball pythons, males can breed in about a year. Uh, females, you want two to three years, probably more towards three. And then corn snakes can actually get up to maturity in about you know 12 to 18 months. So in both cases, uh, the faster isn't usually the better. You know, if you give them time, you don't want an overweight snake. That just stresses out their system if you just keep on power feeding them. So, I mean, I choose to do it slowly. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, that's just a snapshot of when you can get breeding if that's what you wanted to do. Um, you can also note that the prey might be a little bit cheaper for a colubrid, so you don't really have to go anything past an adult mouse. And then with ball pythons, obviously you need to go small rats, or if it's a big female, maybe even medium rats. So it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but they may eat a little bit less often than the colubrids. They also may create a little bit less of a mess. So with corn snakes, they eat a good amount, so they also poop a good amount, and their metabolisms are a bit faster. Ball pythons a little bit slower. It's just kind of a give and take as far as that goes. So all in all, if you're looking for a new pest snake, they're both great choices, but it's much easier to turn your bedroom into the Eastern Continental United States instead of in the West Africa. So it's much easier to keep a corn snake than a ball python in an aquarium, which 
You know, aquariums are meant for fish. You know, they're not meant for snakes. So that's another thing you gotta take into account. If you really wanna get into it, you know, get a rack system. It makes your life a lot easier with whether you have a ball python or a corn snake. And then with that as well, you know, you need heat tape and a proper thermostat. Hey guys, comment below and tell me what you think. Uh, corn snake or ball python? Always like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, you're on the team. With both species, um, snakes like their privacy, so you want to put a hide in there. If you have a rack system with all closed sides, if you have a rack system with all closed sides, you can get away without using a hide, but I always prefer a hide even in that situation. Also, keep in mind corn snakes are a little bit more active in the tank, so if you want to display a snake, a ball python not be the best. If it is moving around, uh, that usually is a bad thing for a ball python, so a healthy, uh, a healthy, happy ball python is one that doesn't move much, but corn snakes tend to, once they get a little bit hungry, they move around the enclosure looking for food, so they are a, a bit more active in that regard.